Ito, pagpap. Tsaka ano, ito ang mga ano, kalakal. Yung hindi niya kukuha dito lang mga ganito eh. Pero pag ito, yan, kalakal o. Oh. Every morning, bags filled with the decomposing remains of last night's fast food feast are collected and brought here to be sorted. Do you ever see food that you don't keep? Is there ever food in such bad condition that you just keep it in the trash? The condition of the pog pog can range from mostly intact food to partially consumed or damaged, but it's all exposed to the relentless heat of Manila's sun throughout the day. As for the quality assurance, well, that's up to the person sorting it. She said that by her eyes, she knows if the food is already spoiled or not because sometimes it's like more on the wet side. So they throw it away and they will just keep the, the fresh food or the pagpag that's also edible. Mm. Is this the only way that you make money? Mm -mm. Abandon all conceptions of comfort, convenience, and what's considered essential. Here, beneath the poverty line, the rules are rewritten. Flimsy walls and a makeshift roof create a shelter that can fit a dozen people. Privacy is a luxury. Whether it's food, fashion, or fixtures, everything new was born of something old, recycled, or discarded. From here, the salvaged food is typically sold to nearby Pog Pog vendors for further processing, but not in Evelyn's case. No locally is the queen of Pog Pog, Evelyn takes on the entire process herself, adding her unique touch, turning this survival food into a local favorite. I'm told you are the person to go to if I want to try Pog Pog. Is that right? <laughs> we already met one woman who makes a living collecting the Pog Pog from the actual garbage dump. Here, it looks like you're having bags delivered right to your stall. How does that work? Who is bringing this to you? So there's a distributor. So she distributes a different fast food like that. And so why not just have somebody sort it for you? Why do you sort it yourself? For quality checking. Mm -hmm. QA. You know, this is such a unique type of food. I'm curious, how did your journey begin with Pog Pog? How did you get started with all this? Uh, so she said that uh, she learned it from her father when they were kids, they ate it like that. Before selling Pog Pog, she's selling like common food, Filipino food. She has a small eatery. So like a carinderia? Exactly. So why'd you go from carinderia to Pog Pog? It's more sellable to her community. Because it's very cheap. Basically, she said, because it's delicious. Yummy. It's yummy. Yummy? Yummy. yummy. <laughs> All right, soon, I'll be trying your fried Pog Pog. But my big question is, what are you doing to transform this food? It's something that was destined for the landfill. The first process, she wash it two times with water. And then just rinse it like that. She wash it thoroughly. After that, she will boil it. That's like the third process of cleaning or washing. So maybe all of the bacteria will be done like that. First marinate in garlic, soy sauce, Sprite, then sugar, MSG, and pineapple juice. Now they hit the oil until they recook all the way through. Now I understand why people say this food is so dangerous. From the rancid garbage dump here to this kitchen, this food has undergone quite the transformation. I gotta say, in general, it smells pretty good in here. I like it. Now, here's the thing. Obviously, I can see it's perfectly natural why this food is off-putting to so many people, but also why it's captured the imagination or the attention of so many people online from other countries. I think the most worrisome part is the fact that somebody may get sick from eating food that's old, that's just been sitting in a warm garbage bag for an unknown period of time. Now, the only thing giving me a little bit of security, considering the fact that I'm about to try this out, is that if she boiled it, good. But here, she is frying the heck out of it. So hopefully, any residual remaining organisms that could be alive in there will be fried to death. That's what we hope. Do we know for sure? No. Tell me something though. Do you feel apprehensive? Do you feel reluctant? I'm kind of apprehensive, but it's all in the mind. But if you taste it, there's nothing wrong with it. Look, the purpose of this video is not to try to advocate in saying, yeah, like, hey, yeah. this is a safe and healthy way of eating. Yeah. But I guess the philosophy of the show since it began was, hey, if they eat it, I'll eat yeah, it too, yeah. including this. Yeah. So, man, well done. She's taking it. Yeah. I think you gotta get these extra crispy. Yeah. At face value, this story is about the Philippines' most taboo food. But as we delve deeper, we uncover a story of resilience and resourcefulness. Evelyn and those who populate Happy Land endure acute adversity day after day. But they choose to walk light, wear a smile, and act on what's within their control. In Happy Land, what are the biggest challenges that people are facing here in this neighborhood? 
mahirap maghanap ng pera rito. Difficult to make a living. So a lot of people are scavengers. There's a lot of junk shops here. What's your hope for the future for yourself personally and your family? Family ako. Makakain lang kami eh. Pag... She's the breadwinner in the family. She just wants all her kids to finish school. Is Pop Pop gonna get your kids through school? Yeah? Wow. Let's be more efficient. There is no clear path from this place to anywhere else that resembles what the world would call success. But through years of selling this disgraced dish, Evelyn has managed to put her children through school. Perhaps the first step in a long and difficult journey away from happy land and toward happiness.